When most people think about lung injuries or breathing problems, they often imagine trauma, smoking-related diseases, or infections like pneumonia. But there's a lesser-known condition that can strike suddenly and without warning, even in otherwise healthy individuals. It's called a spontaneous pneumothorax, and while the name might sound technical, the danger it presents is very real. A spontaneous pneumothorax refers to the sudden collapse of a lung without any obvious external cause, such as trauma. It happens when air leaks into the space between the lung and the chest wall, known as the pleural space. This buildup of air creates pressure on the lung, causing it to partially or fully collapse and can lead to sharp chest pain, difficulty breathing, and even life-threatening complications if not treated promptly. There are actually two main types of spontaneous pneumothorax, primary and secondary. A primary spontaneous pneumothorax occurs in people who don't have any known underlying lung disease. This is most commonly seen in tall, thin young men between the ages of 20 and 30. The exact reason for this demographics pattern isn't fully understood, but researchers believe it's related to anatomical differences in the lungs and chest wall of individuals with this body type. These patients may appear completely healthy until, seemingly out of nowhere, they develop a sudden lung collapse. On the other hand, a secondary spontaneous pneumothorax occurs in people with existing lung conditions, such as COPD, cystic fibrosis, tuberculosis, or interstitial lung disease. In these cases, the weakened or damaged lung tissue makes it easier for air to escape into the pleural space, especially during periods of coughing, strain, or infection. So, what actually causes a spontaneous pneumothorax to occur? In primary cases, it's often due to the rupture of small air-filled sacs in the lungs called blebs or bully. These tiny pockets of air can form near the surface of the lung and, over time, may weaken the surrounding tissue. When one of these blebs ruptures, air leaks into the pleural space and disrupts the vacuum-like pressure that normally keeps the lungs inflated. This causes part or all of the lung to collapse. In most cases, the rupture happens suddenly and without warning. A person may be sitting, walking, or even sleeping when it occurs. In a secondary spontaneous pneumothorax, the same process happens, but the underlying lung disease makes the lung more fragile and more likely to develop blebs or experience tearing of the alveolar walls. The most common overall cause of spontaneous pneumothorax, particularly secondary cases, is COPD. In individuals with chronic bronchitis or emphysema, the structure of the lung is often damaged, and the formation of large bully is common. These bully can rupture easily, especially during episodes of coughing or during physical exertion. In fact, patients with COPD who have a history of smoking are at a significantly higher risk for developing a pneumothorax, and recurrence is also more likely in this group. In the general population, among otherwise healthy individuals, the most frequent trigger is the rupture of a bleb in a tall, thin person, often without any physical exertion or obvious cause. Recognizing the signs and symptoms of a spontaneous pneumothorax is critical because early treatment can prevent complications and reduce the risk of occurrence. One of the hallmark symptoms is sudden, sharp chest pain, often described as stabbing or tearing in nature. This pain typically occurs on one side of the chest and may worsen with deep breaths, coughing, or movement. The second most common symptom is shortness of breath, which can range from mild to severe depending on how much of the lung has collapsed. Some people feel a tightness in the chest or a sensation that they can't fully expand their lungs. In more serious cases, especially when the pneumothorax is large or progresses to a tension pneumothorax, the patient may develop rapid breathing, cyanosis, low oxygen levels, low blood pressure, or even loss of consciousness. On physical examination, a healthcare provider may detect decrease or absent breath sounds on one side of the chest, hyperresonance when tapping the chest wall, or a shift of the trachea in cases of severe tension pneumothorax. A chest x-ray is typically the first diagnostic test ordered and can clearly show the presence of air in the pleural space as well as the degree of lung collapse. In more subtle cases or in trauma patients, a CT scan may be required to detect smaller pneumothoraces that are not easily visible on a standard x-ray. Treatment for a spontaneous pneumothorax depends on its size, the severity of the symptoms, and whether the patient has any underlying lung disease. For small pneumothoraces and otherwise healthy individuals, especially if the patient is stable and not in significant distress, observation may be all that is needed. 
The body can often reabsorb the air in the pleural space over time, allowing the lung to re-expand naturally. In these cases, the patient is typically monitored closely, given supplemental oxygen, and instructed to rest. Serial chest x-rays are taken to ensure the pneumothorax is resolving. For larger pneumothoraces or for patients experiencing significant shortness of breath or distress, more active intervention is necessary. This may include inserting a needle or a chest tube into the pleural space to remove the trapped air and allow the lung to re-expand. A chest tube is typically connected to a suction system or a water seal drainage system to continuously remove air and monitor for any ongoing leaks. In recurrent cases, or if the lung does not re-expand properly, surgery may be required to remove the blebs and seal the lung tissue, often through a procedure called video-assisted thoracoscopic surgery. In some patients, pleurotesis is performed to create an intentional inflammation between the lung and chest wall, causing them to stick together and eliminating the pleural space, which reduces the risk of recurrence. Speaking of recurrence, this is one of the biggest concerns with a spontaneous pneumothorax. Studies show that up to 30 to 50% of people who experience a spontaneous pneumothorax will have another one in the future. That's why prevention and follow-up care are so important. For people who've already had one pneumothorax, doctors may recommend surgical interventions like bleb removal or pleurotesis after the first episode, especially if it was severe or if the patient is involved in high-risk activities like scuba diving, flying, or living at high altitudes. These environments can exacerbate pressure differences in the chest and make recurrence more dangerous. As for preventing a spontaneous pneumothorax from occurring in the first place, there is no guaranteed way to eliminate the risk entirely. This is especially true for primary cases, which can occur in people with no warning signs or underlying disease. However, certain steps can reduce the likelihood. Smoking cessation is one of the most important. Smoking has been strongly linked to both primary and secondary spontaneous pneumothorax due to its damaging effects on the lung tissue and its tendency to increase the formation of blebs. Avoiding recreational drug use is also critical, as these substances have been associated with increased risk. Maintaining healthy lung function through regular exercise, avoiding exposure to pollutants, and managing any existing respiratory conditions with proper medications and care can also help prevent lung complications that could lead to spontaneous pneumothorax. People who are at known risk, such as those with a history of pneumothorax or chronic lung disease, should be particularly cautious when it comes to air travel or altitude changes. The drop in air pressure at high altitudes can cause air trapped in a bleb or in the pleural space to expand, increasing the risk of lung collapse. Some experts recommend waiting several weeks after a pneumothorax resolves before flying again, and only after receiving clearance from a physician and a follow-up chest x-ray confirming that the lung is fully re-expanded. Similarly, scuba diving is generally discouraged for anyone with a history of spontaneous pneumothorax unless they have undergone definitive treatment like pleurotesis and have been thoroughly evaluated by a pulmonary specialist. But as previously mentioned, spontaneous pneumothorax is a condition that highlights how quickly lung function can deteriorate when something goes wrong even in people who appear to be healthy. The sudden onset of chest pain and shortness of breath can be frightening, but knowing the signs and seeking prompt medical attention can make a significant difference in the outcome. Understanding the difference between primary and secondary pneumothorax, recognizing the role of blebs, COPD, and other risk factors, and taking steps to prevent recurrence are all part of managing this condition effectively. Whether you're a healthcare student, a medical professional, or just someone wanting to learn more about the human body, knowing how and why a lung can collapse spontaneously is essential knowledge and could potentially save a life. Thank you for watching this in-depth look at spontaneous pneumothorax. If this video helped clarify this important topic, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more educational content. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next video.